Okay, I think we're ready to get started. Hi, everyone. It's so good to see you out there. Um, thank you for being here this afternoon, for joining us for today's Art Partner Impact Report Overview. We're super excited to talk about this. Um, my name is Courtney Pintron, Ingenuity Director of Partnerships and Learning. I'm also joined here today by Angela Lin, Ingenuity's Director of Data and Research. We've hosted a number of Art Look Institutes this year, really to make sure that our partners know what's even available on Art Look, how to utilize the platform so that when new features are released, you know how to maximize them to support your needs with partnerships or with schools or reporting. So today, we're going to look at a feature that's actually been on Artlook for quite some time, but within our conversations with arts partners, we've noticed in many instances that people are not aware of these reports. They're kind of sometimes a little bit hidden. Um, so we're going to talk today about how you can utilize these reports, not only to enhance reporting to funders, but to also evaluate your impact and reach and make informed decisions about partnerships in your portfolio. And then we'll ask you some questions at the end too about, um, about how we can further enhance these reports as well. So first, maybe with your virtual hand or your real hand um, really quickly, how many of you are familiar with the Arts Partner Impact Report? A few hands. Okay, okay. Some people are familiar. That's great. And now throw a heart up if you utilize those reports for any for any reporting purposes to funders, let's say, or applications. I see a heart. I see one heart. Okay, and now throw a, a thumbs up right now if you utilize those reports for any kind of evaluation purposes when you're thinking about expanding programs or thinking about reach and which schools and communities you're impacting. Okay, I see one thumb. Okay, so that, that's good for us to know. So today we're gonna to talk about how you can do those things more effectively and really think about this as a critical resource for all of those purposes. And then moving forward, how we can make them even better for you and your reporting purposes and how they can streamline processes for you as well. But before we, we jump in too much further, we'd also like to acknowledge that this virtual classroom is taking place on the stolen land of the Council of Three Fires, the Ojibwe, Potawatomi, and Odawa nations. And because of the Great Lakes, the land became a site of travel, of healing, of trade, and gathering for more than a dozen other native tribes. And it's still home to over 100,000 tribal members in the state of Illinois that have stewarded this land and throughout the generations and still practice their traditions and care for the land today. And so as we begin this program, let's honor these ancestral grounds that we're on and support the resilience, strength, and leadership that we know all Indigenous people have shown worldwide. And for non-Indigenous people, let's begin to rethink our own relationship with the land and its original peoples, as well as how we can support Indigenous sovereignty and really advocate for land reparations. And just a couple of... Um, additional items before we get started here. If you would like, we invite you to feel free to update your name with your personal pronouns um, and your organization's name. Also today's session will be recorded um, and will likely be available in a couple of weeks for review. Closed captioning is also available. Let me just double check and make sure that we have that going right now. Okay, and so that's activated. So if you need captions, you can go to the more button at the bottom of the screen and click captions. Um, and finally, if possible, it's great to have a device available. You're likely on your computer or your phone, but have it available so that you can actually go to Artlook um, and take a look at what we're, what we're going to be talking about today. It's not necessary to have an, a, a device, but it can be helpful. 
So with that, I'm going to pass things off to Angela to bring you through our agenda. Thanks, Courtney. And so at least my relationship to uh, most of this work is I am the, one of the two people behind that art look email address if you've ever emailed us before. And pretty much for the session today, like the data team does do a lot of maintenance on the art look platform. And so we're here today to help really um, hear from you all what works best and then also continue to support you all. And so with that, we have the agenda. We are focusing a lot of this session today, of course, on the report itself. But before that, we want to make sure everyone is familiar with Artlook and knows how to log in. Once we handle that introduction, um, we'll dive into a much more extended um, section on the impact report itself. And so some questions we want to help answer is, for example, where does the data for this report come from? How do I even find my organization's impact report? How do I read it? And then other things, once you can access and read it, what use case scenarios are there for this report and what are some things to consider when evaluating your school portfolio? Finally, as Courtney also mentioned, we'd love to hear your feedback. We're continuously improving this platform and would love to also hear what would be most useful to you all have included in this report. We have a related section here. So we have a somewhat new feature that was released in December. We wanna make sure that everyone here also knows about it. It's called Suggested Matches. We won't focus as much on that today. I think some of you all, I recognize that you were in that suggested, met, met, excuse me, suggested matches session last time. And so it will be shorter. We want to make sure everyone is aware of this new feature and knows how to join the action on that. And finally, we have some time, of course, for general Q&A. Um, Courtney and I, of course, would love to be here to answer all your questions and especially any related to our club. And so with that, we are going to hop into a quick Artlook intro. I do recognize a lot of names here, so I think a lot of you all already have Artlook profiles, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, bear with me for um, the next five or a few minutes. And so with that, Artlook, as most of you know, is a data sharing platform that allows communities to work collaboratively and strategically to deliver high quality arts education experience. And so Ingenuity's mission is every child, every grade, and every CPO school. And so with that, we really do, we really do base a lot of our data work in this platform. And with this platform, we have three aspects. We have a public-facing map, which anyone, not just those in Chicago, just anyone with access to internet can see, and that's at chicago.artlookmap.com. And there's a little screenshot of that on the right, and I'll also be walking through that today as well. And so from that public facing map, we then pull into two different portals and you all should be most familiar with the partner portal in which you can log in and update your profile for your organization. And a lot of those data points you feed into there are also shown on the public facing map. And that also is gonna be where we're gonna have our data for our impact. And so all these three aspects come together to provide information to the sector on arts programming offerings in schools and in arts organizations across Chicago. So who hopefully should have an account on Arlick? Hopefully it's all of you. If you do not have an account, we'll also refer you to an email address, which me and my colleague, Christine Ean, um, monitor and can help you set up an account pretty quickly. And so with that, we're gonna do a quick introduction. This is a lot of text. We usually send, we also have this PDF as a reference. I'm just gonna walk through it in live private. Pretty much how do you log in and how do you recover your login? And so here, I'm going to jump to that link that Courtney has put in, chicago.artlookmap.com here. And you can type it again into your portal. A lot of this should look familiar to, I think, most of you. And where you all would be signing in is in Partners Login. So if you click that here, you'll come to this page. If you don't know what your password is, the way to recover it is to click the Forgot Password button at the bottom and type in your email address. From there, it should be really quick. Within 30 seconds to a minute, you should receive an email address or an email with instructions on how to reset your password. And so there is one caveat here. If you don't have an account on Artlook, you will not receive that reset password email. You need to have an account created manually by us just the first time. And from there on, login should be fairly standard. So if you have any questions at all and need an account or don't know what your organization has an account anymore, you can email us at artlook at ingenuity-inc.org, which is referred to here in the bottom. And we will also have it in the chat in future slides. And then one other thing to note is if you do click that forgot password and enter your email in here, we've heard it usually ends up in the junk or spam inbox. So be sure to check those two places as well. 
And so going back, once you have your, I'm just gonna hop back to the home page, chicago.artlookmap.com. You now have a password, you have an account, you're ready to go. The way to log in to your organizational account is to click again, partners log in at the top and fill out this information about your organization or your name, email, password, and sign in. And then we'll do a demo later too, especially in relation to the partner impact report on what that portal looks like. So that concludes pretty much our, let's hop back to the presentation. Here's just a bunch of text with the same process listed out here on how you can recover your login and how you can log in it itself. So hopping now to partner impact report session. Let's focus on the bulk of today's, um, today's topic. And so what is that? You've heard the term, maybe you don't even know what this is. We have some screenshots here. Let's start off there. It's pretty much a PDF. And so here's screenshot I will walk through also where you can find it, what it looks like, et cetera. But we may hear a mock-up one for Ingenuity as an arts partner organization. So this is essentially a fake partner impact report. But again, this is a PDF that really shows your impact and reach along with basic details about your organization that you have filled out on Artlook. A number of these sections, which we want to highlight, are automatically generated in, inside Artlook. It's not, doesn't require additional calculations on your end. And so this PDF is usually, I would say, two to three pages long, though if you have a lot of programs you'd like listed, this can um, extend much further. And so you'll see here, just a quick highlight, there's some information about Ingenuity as a partner organization. We have some dashboard you see here, of like impact and reach, some pie charts, statistics, as well as a list of programs and our reach at the bottom. So now let's actually dive into what this looks like up close and where you can find it. So I'm gonna show one example what we have on the actual website and then log in as this fake ingenuity account as well. So let's go back to chicago.artlookmap.com at the top. This is the homepage. This is what it looks like when you just type in that URL. And from there, um, what we wanna point out why a lot of people don't know about this feature, even though it's not that new, it's because it's on the public facing map here and not within your login account and not within your portal. So you will not find this PDF when you log in, you have to find your profile when you search it here on the public facing map. So we're gonna pull up the partner section here and I um, let's look at actually, I think I just looked at earlier, let's look at our encounter. So you can type in your organization name and also select the school year. We're gonna keep it as the current school year. Here. So if you've never used our look before either, this is what your organization's account looks like or could look like if you don't have one yet. You can, See, it's a search engine to look up programmatic offerings at arts organizations across Chicago, and there's a school search as well. But here, let's look at Art Encounter. So this is, let me just do a quick show. This is what the profile looks like based on the data that they included in their Artlook portal. What we're focusing on here is once you find your profile for your organization, there's this download partner report, and that's what we've been referring to as the partner impact. So I'm gonna download it here. We're in the current school year. And let's see if that runs. There we go, we see a little download here for a PDF. And so what shows up is what I was screenshotting earlier, essentially as a mock-up, is this PDF. And for Art Encounter, it is three pages long here. And then we're gonna actually walk through first, like what is in the impact report. And so here at the top, we have the section. Let me zoom in a bit. So here at the top, we have the section. I'll also point out which parts are calculated and which parts are information you provide. And so this top part is for the most part information you provide into the portal. And so here we have some basic organizational details about Art Encounter. We have a contact, address, website, a link to their Art Look Map profile, as well as a contact phone number. And it also highlights here which school year we're looking at. So right now we're actually looking at the current school year, 22-23. When we scroll down, this is also information that um, the organization is inputted. This is their basic mission and information here, blurb that's copied in. And then this following dashboard is a combination of information you've provided that's calculated in Artlook. And so we have like a basic look at your impact and reach. And what we have is the number of arts program you've listed on Artlook, the number of schools you've stated you serve. And then these last two things are automatically calculated. They're what community areas did you serve based on the schools you listed? And then what CPS networks are these schools in? And so with that, we have this next section, profile school serve. I'll scroll through it and then come back up. 
So profile school serve, we have two pie charts, ethnicity and school discipline interests, student demographics down here. And this makes up the school profile section. And so zooming in here in this first pie chart, this is based on the schools you input as school partners. This pie chart is then calculated and it calculates the percentage of students in each racial ethnic demographic group. This data comes actually, I should say, with the underlying numbers comes from CPS's public information that's published every single school year, their 20th day data, and we upload that into our Artlook database. And so Artlook in this impact report automatically calculates its numbers. And you see here for this organization, for example, based on the schools they inputted, they had 0% American Indian or Native Alaskan Native um, students, 5% Asian, 12% Black or African American, and it's and Hawaiian Pacific Islander. Um, yes, Jamie, I see your question in the chat. We're getting there. Good, good eye too. I, I don't know if you already saw it or you're, you had a question. We actually do have that answer. So it's coming up soon. And so right now here, this is racial ethnic demographic data from essentially calculated from CPS's public information. And this is automatic how we don't ask you to input these numbers for us. We calculate based on the schools. First. A very similar thing happens for school disciplines here. And this is based on what schools have stated are the disciplines they are interested in. For this organization, it's, it looks pretty um, split across all six disciplines, fewer in dance and literary arts, but we do see here largest percentage, 25% for visual arts in the gray. This is the bottom section I think Jamie you're referring to. So with that, we do collect CPS demographics data and we use as many fields as they give us, which is pretty much racial and ethnic, um, demographic information, and then these buckets here of low income, limited English, diverse learners, and then average size of school. So this bottom here, these four numbers, these percentages and figures are also calculated straight from the Artlook database. There's no additional information you need to enter. You just have to give us which schools did you partner with for a specific year. And so what we also wanna highlight, I'm gonna zoom out a bit here, this school's profile section here, um, this is, it's always existed, but this is the first school year actually we have uploaded current year demographic information. I think we've heard from a few of you all last year that these bar charts were like zeros, these numbers down here were zeros, because for the most part, we were only updating um, demographic information on a lag. We weren't doing it until let's say this school year, 22, 23, we weren't even uploading this information until the following October or so, which we have now rectified here and hope it is helpful. So I just wanna highlight here that we now have this report completely filled out for the current school year, especially for CPS demographics. So here is all the stuff that's automatically calculated for profile school serve. Okay, so now what are the other parts that you input and where does that feed? That is into your programmatic listings here. Um, this organization has listed three programs in their Artlook profile. And so we pull all that information out here into the name of your program, the description you listed, as well as the type. So that's field trip online, et cetera, resources. And they're all listed out here. So again, the length of your report might depend on how many programs um, you have listed. And finally, we have some more in-depth metrics about the schools that you reach. So this organization here inputted these six different schools here that are listed as partners for the current school year. And from there, we map then in Artlook, what communities were these? These are those 77 community areas of Chicago. And then also what networks did these schools, are these schools in? And so from there, this is all again, automatically calculated in the section of Central Arts the communities and networks and the schools are inputted by you all. This last blurb is just something about Artlook and just as a basic overview again, so we have this PDF that you can download at any time on your public facing page. And we will, I'm also gonna now show you how to input and update that information. So backing up now again, where did I find that report? Just a quick recap. I'm on the homepage, chicago.artlookmap.com. I'm looking up my organization here or in this demo I'm using Art Encounter. Let's say I'm looking at current school year. I am going to find that profile. Oh, excuse me, I put schools. Going to partners, art encounter. And then here, that link here gives you that PDF download to what we've been calling the partner impact report. And so I just saw a question too. Um, are Chicago char charter schools, excuse me, included in data? Yes. 
as long as they're part of the Chicago Public School Network, um, they're still CPS charter school, yes. So in our database, out of all the schools you can list, we have roughly 650 schools um, that can be listed, which are all the ones listed as Chicago Public Schools. So um, now let me show you where you can input this data. And what we want to highlight too is you can pull up this impact report for any school year. So Courtney is also going to outline some use cases, but if you are looking for a current school year, you have this now available to you with updated demographic information. If you're looking for the prior school year, 21, 22, or anything else, you can also click just up here on the specific year and click download partner report and open that up and save that PDF. I'm just going to do that right here as an example, and you'll see that the differentiation is just at the top tab here on the top right. So it'll indicate to you what school year you're looking at and correspondingly calculate the demographics data for that school year, as well as like what schools you serve based on that. So now I'm going to hop into a demo of the, the fake ingenuity profile. So here, let me close out a few things. Um, you can ignore looking at the screen. You're not going to have access to this. But I am going to know um, we created a fake ingenuity account for a partner organization. So looking here, this should be once you click, let me show you where I get this screen first. I'm going to go, I keep going back to this, chicago.arlegmap.com, partners login here. You enter in your information, click sign in. Once you sign in, you should see something very similar to what I'm showing right now here. I'm actually going to make this screen just slightly, or I'll keep the size here. And so the only difference for what I see really is probably this red bar I'm viewing the portals of admin. Everything else should look fairly similar on your end. And so from here, you're directed to a few number of areas of where you can update your profile. For the most part, I'm going to be using this 22 to 23 art look map profile. So I'm going to click here. There's four different sections. Um, they're pretty straightforward for the most part. I'm going to highlight which areas feed into the partner impact report. And just to re-emphasize, the partner impact report is based on information you input into your organizational account on Artlook, merged with additional calculations that Artlook does on the back end. So there's no external source where you, up, you have to update other things. So from here, let's look at here. Ingenuity, I've, you can include a website and phone number and some about your basic, or, basic organization details. And so these four areas that you update go into, I have, um, I have art encounters here. Actually, let me just pull up the Ingenuity one so we can demo. Give me one second while I pull up our example here. Okay, so let's compare this side by side a bit. So now I have up here that fake ingenuity partner impact report. And what you will essentially update here, let me go back, let me move this over before I keep toggling back and forth now, left here. So here I'm in the portal as an organization, I'm on the organizational details. If you look at the details in the about section, this is going to correspond in that public facing pages top section, everything that's essentially in the blue and this top little message part and about ingenuity in the yellow here. Then other sections that you're going to need to update then for the partner impact report, of course, we'd love for you to um, update everything on um, as much as information changes. That is always our goal here. And just as a quick highlight, we have additional information about disciplines and BIPOC characteristics for your organization. But for the partner impact report itself, I also really want to highlight, we especially need information here on your programs and school partnerships. So here I have two programs listed. Um, you should also, if you had a profile for some prior school year, you didn't see Ingenuity had a profile in 1920 and then no other school year. But if you had one for prior school year, you can also still update that information for at least I think 21, 22 and 22, 23. Um, so if you did want to update older information, you're able to for the most part, but also for this current school year, you can add programs. And so every time you click add new program here, it's some basic information. It's the name, grade served, description. This is a list of like program approaches to arts instruction, such as STEAM or arts integration. We also have information that we collect about your program types that are offered. And then here are some intended outcomes. We look over here, financial support. How often are the teaching artists or program staff BIPOC that directly deliver this specific program? 
arts disciplines, we have a ton of sub disciplines listed here. And then also um, you can save that information as you go along. And you can see down here, we have two programs for ingenuity listed so far, they're generic. So that's a lot of stuff to look at right now. I'm just gonna show you also what it looks like filled out for dance program. And once you fill it out, where these all feed into is again, that partner impact report. I'm gonna zoom out right here. And that is gonna be that our program section. So what may what I might not explicitly said before is it's updated essentially immediately. The, when you update your profile, if you go back to your um, public facing profile here and download your impact report again, it will be updated. So let's say right now I were to excuse me, if I'm added a new program, then I went back to the public facing page. That PDF would have that new program you just listed, and the same thing is going to go for the profile of your students. So once you update your programmatic information, there's also school partnerships here. And for here, we're asking for what school to do partner with for a specific school year. And this is the bulk of all the information for communities that you worked with, CPS networks served, as well as um, student demographics information. So if you don't have schools that you, or if you don't list any schools here, a lot of your partner impact, what really your impact it's going to be blank. And so we really want to highlight here too, like, please fill out the schools that you've been partnering with. And then at the moment that that changes, if you come in and add a new school partner, that impact report again is automatically updated and calculated. So if I added a new school here, let's just show too, this pie chart here for racial and ethnic demographics would be updated immediately, as well as student demographics below here for percentage of low income, limited English, diverse learners, and average enrollment. Same thing would also happen once you change the schools that you've listed. This reach is also going to be updated for community serve networks based on the schools that you've listed. So it is all automatically calculated within our flow. And so, okay, I think we actually, this is pretty much, I would say, and we have the last section here, um, is contact is straightforward. We just want to know who you can contact at your organization and also who schools can contact. This education contact is going to be listed on your public facing profile. So one, if schools are looking at Artlook, they need to know who they can contact and email and reach out to. This is also the same contact that is listed at the top of your partner impact report. So pretty much all the say, there's a lot of, I would say like 60, 70% of what you update within your profile ends up showing up on your partner impact. So it's really important to keep things up to date. And if you just need a new impact report for something, just go in and update your profile, refresh that page at the front end, and you'll get a new PDF. Okay, I'm gonna pause there. I see some questions and comments I don't think I've addressed yet. Um, let me scroll back up and go, go up to see where I last respond. If you have more questions, go ahead and raise your hand or continue putting them in the chat. So let me give me one second to reorient myself. So with one of our, um, I'm going to start Rebecca's comment. If one of our partner schools isn't showing up, how do we flag that to be included? Um, I don't know if you mean that the, the school itself isn't showing up. Let me show here. Yes, it's, sorry. Hi. Oh, um, Thank you. Uh, yes, one of our partner schools isn't, uh, I've, I've searched a few times using a few different, I don't know, configurations, and it uh, isn't showing up. It's a charter school, but it is a CPS school. Cool. Could you let me know what the name is? Sherman School of Excellence. Oh, oh Angela, oh, you're I'm muted. Just muted. <laughs> I just muted myself. Thanks, Courtney. Um, let me reach out to you separately about that, Rebecca. Thank you very much. Let me, let me just note that. And we should technically have all CPS schools listed. Okay, let's see the next question. Um, is there a way for us to separate out data for separate streams of programming? For example, if I wanted to see the data for our residency programs only or our field trip programs only. So I think the short, there might be some work. I have an idea for a workaround. It is going to require some um, extra effort on your end. There's not an easy way to do it, for example, but I would say if you do want those two separate reports, one way to do it is to come to your Prova here. Um, I, I don't know how many schools it is. If it's a lot, I can see this being extra effort, but pretty much removing everything. Let's say you need that residency PDF, 
remove everything that's not a residency, save it, go to your public facing page and download that PDF, and then come back into your portal, do the other flip side, include everything for field trips, and then asking for, and then looking back at your updated PDF. So generally speaking, we do usually do the impact report for all schools. And I wanna be a little bit careful about that, that we still want all of your schools listed ultimately. That being said, even though Got the impact thank report, you. even though the impact report won't reflect that data, if you have specific data requests, you can always reach out to Ingenuity. Let's say if you want something specific for reporting purposes, and we can we can analyze that data and provide it for you. You just give us a little bit of an advance notice. Yeah, thank Amazing. you. Thank you. Oh yeah, Courtney, thank you for elevating that. I was gonna say, um, actually, we're, um, Dana, sorry, Dana, we actually can't do that for you. We have like an extra. I don't know if we call like a beta site, but there's a site that we use to mess around with stuff that would never impact your public facing page. So we could generate those reports essentially on your behalf and send it to you. So like you don't have to go mess around with us on the back end. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks. That was a good question. Okay, let's see. Um, next one. This is so great. Can the data be filtered by school type, elementary, high school, and programs? So for example, can we filter our organization's elementary school programs only? So I think similar answer to what was before. Maybe reach out to Courtney and I afterwards and we can help generate that for you as long as you give us a list. And um, I actually, thank you so much for bringing that up, Courtney. It might be better if we actually do that so it's not messing with some of the data inside your port portal and or duplicating some efforts for you. Thank you. Okay, um, I think Courtney, I'm actually going to like, pass you on this next one, but what would qualify as a school partner? We do lots of programs with schools, but not as many in schools. For the purposes of Art Look, it would be an in school program, um, but a, a lot can qualify as an arts partner. Angela and I go through an annual process of basically looking to see. Uh, specifically after the survey, what schools are reporting as far as partnerships go. And then we go through a process of um, accepting various partnerships that they propose. In most cases, they pass unless it's really outside of the arts or it's not an in-school program. But sometimes there are intersections, obviously, between arts and science or arts and math, and they might partner with an organization that maybe isn't considered an arts organization. And we still accept those as well. Um, hi, I, I added that uh, question originally, and I, I like um, there's I did I added it before I saw like that you had different like indicators, right? Field trips in school, blah, 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 uh, or workshops. And I mean, a, a bulk of our programming is with schools or field trips where they kid the groups come to see a, a, a film program. Um, as opposed to an in-school workshop, let's say. Um, many schools also um, will purchase our programs and view them in schools as well. So like, does, I mean, I assume then that it would count as a field trip, right? Yeah, that definitely counts. So I should say in-school time, typically. Oh, okay. Field yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely count. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, yeah, I understand now. And I didn't realize that there was a field trip option too. So all of our programs would count. So we go from having one school on our listing to like dozens and dozens. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. yeah, and you know, that's interesting because we still, I think field trips was the category that took the largest hit during the pandemic in terms of partnership numbers. And so I'm wondering also too, if people are still not um, in, indicating those field trips as partnerships on their profiles and that could be also impacting numbers in that way. Thank you. And then I think Kathleen, you already saw this, but just elevate to like once you go in, yep, you can just select field trip here. So please include all those that you were just talking about and just select field trip and these check marks as you add the schools. And sorry, to back up, this is the school partnership section within your portal. And virtual okay. programs also count. Just yes, I actually, um, it's a, if for those, I don't know when you all last in our last logged into Art Look, if you logged in prior to 1920, there's actually no option to select this before. So starting in the 2019 and 20 school year, we started adding this online slash virtual option. So that is a new type that we have for programs. 
The next question we have, actually, and I may have to take a look at this later. So it's saying um, the program definitions on the partner profile page no longer work. Actually, it works, but the link to arts integration chart doesn't. I am going to write that down and take a look at this later. Um, it's it sounds like it's just that link is out to date and out of date, and we need to update it. Thank you for flagging that. <laughs> okay. Next one, I don't see a way to update school partner checkboxes or data before the school year 21-22. If something needs to be updated, how do I do that? So it depends um, exactly what, I may have to look up which organization, or Jamie, if you don't mind, maybe just message me which organization you look at. I think I need to take a look at your profile. Um, for example, it, I don't know if you mean you try clicking on it and it won't let you change the stuff. And that's usually because we, stop letting people update things that are very out of date now, but we can still make the changes as in like Courtney and I can still make the changes on the back end. So if the data exists and incorrect, we can make that update. If you're saying, um, if you're, I, oh, it sounds like that is the, I got an okay, thank you. So I think that's the question. Let me just update for everyone as well. If you're asking for a new profile, you're probably only gonna see the current school year. And so if you need higher school year date, let's say you really need an impact report for the 21-22 school year. Um, again, contact us and we can work with that request. Generally, only school years are added once you have an art look profile, so it's not gonna automatically create you data to input for a prior school year if you asked us today to create a profile. Okay, let's keep going. Thank you so much for all these great questions. I love the, the engagement too. This is actually really great to hear too. So I'm like, I, I can tell too, like what you all are starting to use Artlook for, what's important, what you also may be less familiar with. Um, oh, Catherine, we answered field trips, great. Next thing, um, follow-up question. So are after school programs considered out of school? Out of school? Um, I believe yes, and I'm just gonna, look here, so out of school and or summer, we have these program type definitions here. And here we have any arts-based programming in which students participate outside of traditional school hours. So I think the answer to your question essentially is yes. And this includes programs, just reading off of this, this includes programs that take place after school and those that are held during the summer months or other breaks. And so um, just flag, I don't know how many of y'all work with a Creative Schools Fund. I don't know if that's why this question is also coming up too. I just want to flag that the Creative Schools Fund grant only focuses on what Courtney was mentioning earlier, like in school time. So that's the difference. Out of school time counts as a partnership, but that doesn't mean you'll get funding from our Creative Schools Fund grants. And so the, I don't know if that's where that question is coming from. It's just something additional we want to add. And so here we also have an additional question. Our residencies sustained programming versus workshops, um, workshops, one off short program. So I think both of those, we have definitions here. I think, I don't know if this is your question. Both of those do count as partnerships here. So you can select performance and workshop under this aspect. And we also do have this definition list that you can refer to for what that is here. So performance exhibit, lecture or demonstration workshop or other short-term arts education programs or events. And that I got to, I'm under school partnerships and I have this link right here that I can click on. And this is also the same kind of like FAQ that schools receive when they're listing your organizations under the section. All right, um, I just wanna check also, I think I answered all the ones in the chat. Are there any, is there anyone else in the audience that wants to unmute or has any other additional questions they wanna pull? All right, okay, we'll keep moving then. Thank you for the fantastic questions on this. And I hope it was, I hope it's now clear where you can access your partner impact report as well as how to update this information. And so let's also just do a quick recap before I hand it off to Corey on more. Now you have this, what do you do with it? So the quick recap again is partner impact reports evaluate your impact and reach. They're a PDF you can access on the public facing website, chicago.artworkmap.com. That data comes from what you input into your organization's profile. It is updated instantaneously from what you update in your profile and is now pulling current year data if you're looking at 22, 23 school year for demographics information. And a lot of those other statistics are calculated automatically in Artwork. So now I'm gonna pass it to Courtney to really take us to the next step of what you do with
Sorry about that. I got disconnected for a moment. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes? Okay, awesome. Okay, so Angela brought you through how to access your reports and what data points are available once you navigate there. But let's talk a little bit about use case scenarios. So looking at the screen here, we have grant proposals, grant reports, and discussing impact and reach with funders. So these reports are really meant to ideally streamline those conversations for you, those processes of reporting. If you were working on a grant report or an application that was asking for some of these data pieces, and let's say you didn't utilize the impact report, I was talking to Angela about this actually yesterday, you'd have to look up CPF demographics data. These are apparently very huge data sets. There are multiple data sets that you'd have to sift through. And you'd have to find each school that you're partnering with and kind of start to add up those numbers individually. So that's very time consuming. So this report is really designed to streamline those reporting processes for you. Um, we've also started to alert to these reports. A lot of funders are now asking their grantees to utilize these reports and we're actually going to be hosting a very similar session to this one specifically for funders that support arts education. In a way, um, that will ideally streamline how many different types of reports you're having to put together, right? So that this can be the one that you predominantly use in your reporting processes. So um, in addition to funders, prospective school partners may also be interested in learning more about the communities and schools that you've previously worked with, as well as an overview of your programmatic offerings. And a report like this can be a really good jumping off point or springboard for those conversations. And then expanding by talking about your approach to working with those various schools, stakeholders, and communities. But providing this as a snapshot, as an overview can be, can be super ben beneficial in those preliminary conversations. Um, and then also we have understanding your organization's reach as well as evaluating your organization's plans for current and future school years. So this evaluation component. Obviously at a glance, you can determine how many schools you're partnering with and what network, what are the demographics of each school and really ask if you're serving the communities that you're intending to serve um, with your program. So does this align with your organization's programmatic goals and objectives? And hopefully getting a little bit more intentional about those connections really, and those decisions that you're making when partnering with schools. I mean, ideally this can also help you scale your programs and think about what might be involved in expanding your programmatic reach from year to year, especially if you are moving into your budget planning season, you can look back at previous years, you can make some projections. Um, and, and yeah, so I think that that about covers the points here. But let's talk a little bit more about evaluating your impact and reach and kind of some more elements that you should consider when looking at your, we'll say, partnership portfolio. So you may want to consider portfolio balance and how you can, once again, be intentional about which schools you're partnering with. Um, you may want to have a, a balance of network and community areas and school demographics. Or in some cases, you may want an intentional, you may make a, an intentional decision to work more deeply and closely with particular community areas and demographics. But just having a sense of that before you're going into it and then matching it up, utilizing this Im impact report and really seeing what the outcomes are. Um, and so the report can also, I think, facilitate drawing connections. This is a big one that many of you may not already do, but it can facilitate drawing connections between sector-wide needs as indicated by annual data that we put out through the state of the arts report and where you're directing your resources and programs. So we're getting ready to publish the state of the arts report for the 21-22 school year. Um, and through this data, we've learned that, for instance, the number of arts partners working with the district um, has increased quite a bit in the last year. 
However, non-district managed schools continue to have the lowest number of arts partnerships and access to the arts, as you can see um, illustrated in this bar chart um, in that last row. I, Angela, I don't know if you wanna kind of orient them to that bar chart a little bit more than I am. I can do that just for a quick sec, and let me do that. No. It's a little harder to read the numbers. Just look at how large the green and the reds are. I think it's a little bit easier. So that top row, we split them by school type. And just generally speaking for this bar chart, what we're looking at is what did students have access to at their school? So they have access to an arts partnership at their school and split by school type essentially, and then race and ethnicity. So each row is a school type. The top row is essentially district managed schools that are smaller in the sense like lower enrollment. Middle are larger district managed schools. And what Courtney is highlighting is bottom, um, non-district managed. And then I just saw that question was perfect. Yes, for the most part, it's charter schools. There are some other like option schools, um, mm -hmm. ALOPs in there, but what you are probably most familiar with is charter schools. And that's that bottom row. And so what you see there is just look at the bottom row. Don't you don't have to look at the numbers, is the reds are just all so much higher than any other row, just means that a larger percentage of non-district managed schools and students aren't having access to arts partnerships. The second part of this is racial ethnic demographics, which is each individual bar when you go left or right, which is from left or right, it's a little hard to see. Latinx students, black students, white students, Asian students, and then other. And these are the categories that CPS uses to define, um, to count up their students. And what you see there is that, at least for the most part, a lot of this is coming down first to the rows. Non-district manage is just really like those reds are so much higher. And we do see what we saw in the state of the arts report, for the most part, um, black students are still less likely than their peers to have access to high quality arts education are not receiving that and having it, um, having it at their schools. And so that's a little bit of a sidebar. I'll pass it back to Courtney if Bruno's No, yeah, that's exactly it. So then in looking at your impact report, you can immediate, immediately see um, what networks you are working with, what schools you're working with. Are you working mostly with district managed schools or do you have some non-district managed schools in there? And then once again, looking at your demographics, the demographics of the school. Um, that's another layer, another breakdown. So really taking some of the kind of global data that Ingenuity provides and matching it up with your impact reports and your art look profiles can be hugely beneficial in thinking about how we are meeting the needs of the sector and making an even greater collective impact. Okay. So those are just some use case scenarios. Before we move on, Isla, I'd like to just ask if anyone out there would like to just offer up any other use case scenarios, ways in which you've utilized these reports previously. And feel free to drop those in the chat or unmute if you'd like. There might be some things that we're overlooking. Okay, so it seems like that about covers it. But if you have any other ideas about how you might utilize those reports or how you've been utilizing those reports, definitely let us know. I think this is a good segue. So yeah, thinking about what would help with your reporting needs, your evaluation needs, how can we enhance these reports now? Um, what are ways in which you can make this better for your needs, either evaluation or reporting? Is there anything missing from these reports right now that you're getting asked by funders and thinking, well, there's that one ingenuity report, but it doesn't have all the things we need, so we might as well not use it because they're asking for X, Y, and Z. We want to know what those things are so that we can help you utilize this more frequently and once again streamline some of those reporting processes. I see one thing to start us off. I'm sorry, I see two other questions. Let's get back to that after the section. Um, but then I see um, filter capabilities and custom labels. Um, Jay, if you don't mind, can you elaborate on custom labels? At least I have an idea for filters. Sure, absolutely. So if we have some internal language that we use to describe certain programs compared to other programs, um, something that we can tag on to that checklist on the um, 
I, I guess I forgot what you called the account, the dashboard that we can manipulate. If we can add a label there that then could show up in the report as well. So just to clarify, do you mean like this section? When yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I see. Okay, okay. That is helpful to know. And then I'm guessing you know, like, like we have you. Um, when you talk about filter capabilities, I think these are related to the questions from before. Mm -hmm. Another question someone else said about elementary, high school, and you said um, residencies versus other program types. Yes, exactly. Got it. Thank you. That is good to know. Let's see what else. Okay, we have other comments. Thank you. Um, so from um, Amy, we have the ability to add non-CPS partners. Not sure if that's possible though. I have to admit our mission is predominant or is just focused on CPS schools. So I don't see that as um, at least an immediate area that we will address. But they, we do have like art like for other communities. I won't get into really in depth here, but that's probably not going to be what you're I'm guessing you're based in Chicago or working with other Chicago schools. We also have to filter by program type um, from Christina. Same thing, I think very similar to what I heard from the prior comments and school type. And then maybe to maybe the ability to add total contact hours since they can vary so widely in the, these programs. That's actually, that's good feedback to know. Mm -hmm. All right, are there any other, um, any other recommendations for where I should, I think I hear like most people that people say are filtering capabilities so that not all their school partners are listed, which is an interesting one. Well, do you have your partnerships maybe? Okay, I'm also making notes for, and we also will save this chat. This is all really good to know. Oh, I'm sorry that I'm still sharing this screen. I'll go back to the premier slide. Oh, that's interesting. Longevity of partnerships. So almost maybe having some data from previous years in the current year report would be interesting. And then we have supplemental things like busing. That's an interesting one because I know we collect that information when we ask you to fill out all of your program type info or like specific information for a program. It's just not currently displayed like on the partner impact report. So that's an interesting one. I wonder if that's something that can be pulled in a little bit more easily. Other things we have, oh, interesting. I uh, just jumped one, I go back, but there's cumulative reports, not year by year. So just general impact. I guess I could see it being commonly but like toggling like between X and Y years. And I see a thumbs up reaction to that one too. So it sounds like mm -hmm. that's getting some additional um, momentum there. We also said um, a map of location of school in the city. So we don't actually, that's a good question because right now what we pretty much use community area as a proxy for location of schools in the city. And we don't really have a, we don't have that in the partner impact report of like where are your schools just like a dot of where they're listed. That's a, that's a good, I think that's a good one. Okay, let's keep going down. Um, from Sarah, we have, it seems harder to connect with high school arts liaisons. Is there a way we can use Artlift Map to build partnerships easier with the high schools? I wonder if this actually goes into our next section. I don't know, Sarah, if you know about suggested matches, just hold that for a minute. Or Courtney, I don't know if you have additional things you want to share on that question. Yeah, I think we can probably somewhat address that in the next section. Okay, and then we, um, last one was retention numbers. Retention numbers are the other question we get asked a lot, which gets tricky. Could you elaborate on that more, Amy? If you feel, um, you can either unmute or just continue to put it in the chat. Sure, I can talk. It was partially an extension of uh, my previous question about longevity of partnerships, um, but we also get asked with our, um, we get asked about specific student retention because of after school partnerships, which involves rosters. So that mm -hmm. other type of, which is a, a whole different bag, but centered around the longevity of partnerships have we been at this school for the past 10 years and we've like it or whatever would help guide those conversations in a in a summary report and, and then when we go into the individual like school by school roster retention it's a it it supplements that um could supplement that report hmm. it's good to know
Yeah, thank you. I noted that. Wonder, yeah, I wonder what we can do to incorporate some of that information. Okay, I think it sounds like that there's a lot of great comments there. Um, if you have more, please continue to put them in the chat or I just want to let's just do a last call. Are there any other comments that people want to share, whether or not in the chat or on meeting? All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go back up. I think there were two questions that were put in earlier. Give me a second to find them. Um, we had one question. If you teach classes full time, is that a residence? Um, Courtney, I'm not sure if you have an answer for that. The question is, if you teach classes full time, is it yes. a residency? I think it's from Sherry. Am I saying your name correctly, Sherry? Um, yeah. Really elaborate on yeah. That. So we um, currently are working in a school where we teach every we teach you know five hours a day five days a week to all fifth through eighth graders so how is that categorized i would consider that a residency okay thank you all right and i think the final question we had also for me a perfect um is there a way for us to find is there a way for us to identify specific schools with no arts partners that's a really good question too let me detour it's not, I will try to keep this short. It's not exactly related for impact program, but a great question and why we love art look as well. So as usual, I'm gonna bring us to the public facing map. Let me close out all my other tabs again. Public facing map here. And what you're looking for now is gonna be leveraging the school side of the filter. And what we have here are these advanced filters. So we're gonna highlight some of this in the next section, but not as much. So let me do a quick play um, to show you what you can look for. And what you're looking for here is you don't really have a specific school you're looking for. So keep the search engine blank. And what you're looking for, I don't know if you want to see schools that had no partners last year or already no partners reported this year. I think the most accurate data might be looking at those that had no partners last year, like the complete school year, but it, it's up to you. So for now, I'm going to switch to the last school year. And then here for number of organization partners, you do have this option to find click no partners. And so with that, if that's the one thing you want to filter on, there's additional filters you can see here. I have a list of 100 matches already. One thing we're just going to um, we love to advertise a bit is a somewhat new, I say within the last year feature, is let's go back to the home page. We're going to do the same thing again. Let's go to 2122, no partners here in the filters. And we have this relatively new toggle. Maybe I should stop saying relatively new. It was like last February, I think now. But it's a toggle of yes. Um, and schools that have stated they're now currently looking for partnerships and have updated this explicitly. So if you filter this right there, you see eight matches. And I think that's a lot, that's a lot more curated and might be a great place to start. And that's that badge you see here, looking for a partnership. And this means they had zero partners because you included this filter here, zero partners listed here as well. And then a quick plug, let me just expand my screen a bit here you have this export list function and if you click it I'm, it's not going to really show up here you download a csv which you can open and i'll have the search results listed there i'll have a list of the arts liaison or the main, main arts person contact at that school so you'll have the eight rows basic school information for those eight schools that show up here and a contact information you can do to reach out to those arts liaison so that's a quick plug for Artlook in general as what we view as like a data sharing platform really to help connect also partners, arts organizations and schools for partnerships. Okay, um, is there anything else you wanna add Courtney to before we hop into the next section? No, I think that's actually a really good segue to be honest. Um, so if you're a new partner or maybe you're just working on developing relationships with schools and building your partner portfolio, we have this new suggested matches feature that can really be a wonderful place to start. Um, so this launched fairly recently. When did we launch? Right before the holidays, essentially. Um, and it's really building off of a feature, another feature that Angela just covered, which is that I'm looking for a partnership currently. That toggle, that blue star that you saw on some profiles. Um, but just backing up a little bit, Artlook 
for a long time, we've talked about it as a matchmaking platform for schools and arts organizations. But we've heard from partners from schools that finding partners on Art Look can be time consuming, and you're not always sure where to begin with so many potential options. Sometimes you're unclear about how to find matches or what criteria you should even utilize. And when you do find a partner match that seems like a good fit for your school or for your organization, sometimes they're not available or don't have the capacity to take on a, a new partnership. Um, so we're, we're working on subtracting some of that work that it takes you to find matches by elevating potential or suggested matches based on information that you've indicated in your profile that Angela walked you through, such as sub-discipline and program type um, from your arts organization. And then for schools on their end, interest. So now, as long as you have toggled on that you're looking for a partnership, that blue badge once again, you should receive a number of suggested matches via notifications on your Artlook profile that will elevate schools that have said, based on their profile interest, that they would be a match with your programmatic offering. So some of you may have already started receiving those notifications based on information that you um, input into your profile, including toggling on that you are currently looking for partnerships. Has anyone experienced this yet? Has anyone received notifications in their Artlook profile elevating potential matches? Amy, okay. Anyone else? Okay. And that might just be, be because you haven't toggled on that you're searching for partnerships right now and you might not be looking for partnerships right now. but. In the fall, let's say you're looking for new school partners, it's a great way to get started. Um, Angela, I don't know if you want to kind of give them a little bit of a live drive on what that looks like. Once you, yeah, I can do that then. Um, so let's do that. So let's let me recap then what you need to do, and then we'll just show you how to do that. Perfect. So the things that, or Courtney, did you want to also talk through this, or I can talk through the live drive as well. Yeah, I think we kind of already talked about it a little bit, but the steps are number one, you need to toggle that you are indeed looking for a partnership um, in order to receive these notifications. And then you wanna make sure that your contact information is also up to date. And then you're going to make sure that your programs are up to date. You wanna make sure that you at least list one program with a sub-discipline um, and the program type, because then there, that's how the algorithm works. It'll be matched based on those things. So if you're missing those elements from your profile, then you won't receive any matches because there's nothing for the algorithm to go off of. Um, and then once those things are updated on your profile, you should receive a lot of matches and the school on their end will also be alerted about you and your program offering. So we're gonna bring you through that um, really quickly and, and give you some insight into what that looks like. Yes, let me do, do that right now. So I'm going to also go against your back end. So ignore everything you're seeing right now. And we're going to go into that fake ingenuity arts partner account. And so you've already saw a lot of this in the prior section. Let's just highlight now the areas now we want you to update. So in general, you want to be you want a good, if you want a filled out partner impact report and you want to get opted into the suggested matches, the best way is to update everything as much as you can. We do hope it hopefully doesn't take you more than 10 to 15 minutes in general to update everything from the beginning. And so just highlighting what Courtney has pointed out here for the suggested matches. If this is now I'm, I'm logged in. I went to Artlook Map Profile. The things, excuse me, actually, there we go. Now we're in the organization side, here we go. So Chicago, go to 2022 to 23, Artlook map profile. From here, what we're looking for is one, um, contact information's up to date, so come up here, fill out the education contact, and also if you have executive director contact information here. 
Secondly, we have that toggle that Courtney mentioned, the toggles under the school partnership section. I did not address this earlier, it's this top thing. It's quick, you just click yes or no. The goal of suggested matches is to match people that will say yes. So if you do, if you do click no, you will not be opted in suggested matches, which it just means that you're not currently looking for partnerships, which I think is appropriate here. But if you are looking to be opted into suggested matches, which means you get school suggested to you and they also could get you suggested to them, you toggle here to yes. And then finally, what Courtney also mentioned was programs. She mentioned some difficulties with program types. Highlight where those are. The programs here, when we showed you that add new program part, there's a lot of different fields here. But the ones that we want to match, especially to schools, is to at least have, of course, a name and description is really helpful. But scrolling down here, filling out this program type section, whether or not it's a field trip, residency, other, et cetera. And then also, whether or not, um, what are the sub disciplines that are addressed by this program? And so here we have the main disciplines of dance, literary arts, media arts, visual arts, theater, and music. And within each of those, I think we have over 100 sub disciplines that are um, listed here. So please select all of the sub disciplines that are addressed by this particular program. And then what we do is that's really it. That is really all you need to do to get opted into suggested matches. It's pretty simple there. Of course, we still want you to have other pieces of updated information. So if the school were to look at your suggested match, they would have more information to look at. And let me show you what that actually means. So now let's also show you what does this, what does this even look like? I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show up here in a second. So might be, I have a lot of, um, we, were, we were messing with things, so that's why there's a lot of notifications here, but let me bet, let me go into the slide deck. We also screenshotted them for you. So once you fill out that information, the next day, um, you should start receiving some in-app, in-app being once you log into the school or your partner portal, and then also email notifications. So on the left, we have a mock-up for one. Um, this is an email that is sent out by Artwork that I received. You can see we launched this in December. So this was, oops, excuse me. This was roughly on December 5th. And so once I updated my items, toggle, contact information, program information, the next day I received something that looked like this. And what it had was this card looking thing where it lists out all of my potential matches for school. So I think we were, trying to demo this more pretty lenient and like what we listed here and what we saw just in this one example just to see if it worked and make sure it worked was there 48 new matches with that fake ingenuity account on our club and within that here I can't click on it but there are links to each of for here the organizations that were matched with that ingenuity school and so you would be get receiving the flip side you would receive an email for example listing out schools that match the items that you have inputted into your artwork profile and you can click on them it'll bring you to the artwork map and you can even look through like how many courses do they offer last year what arts um disciplines do they already have courses for what arts instructors do they have at the school you can and you can like explore a little bit more to see if it actually is a good fit for your organization's program and so this is what how you show up in their notification so this sample emails for a school. So if, if you were guitars over guns, then you would see here, this is how your suggested match would show up to a school and they would receive this email. The second aspect is on the right. It's the in-app notification, the screenshot of what it looks like. As many other social media platforms have now, it's a little bell, there's a little red flag for unread notifications. And I'll show you that here. Um, so this is slightly unrelated, so you don't have to read them here. But you can see that there's this bell and you can click it and you would receive a list of links for your suggested matches. And so here as a school, I saw Portside Music Theater has a program that matched my school's interests on Artlook and it lists out every single organization. And so just that first time that you opt into this, like you fill out all of your, or all of your information, you might get more matches that first day. But then as schools continue to update their information, let's say um, Rowe Elementary, came back in tomorrow, they used to not be interested in dance field trips, but now they're interested in a dance field trip. They update their information on Artlook. Then if your organization had a dance field trip program offering, your organization would be sent as a new suggested match to that school. And you would also receive a new suggested match from like Rowe Elementary and letting you know that you can click that link, 
look at their profile and take a closer look at whether or not you think it's a good match. So suggestion matches have like several different aspects of updating your information so that schools can get matched to you and that you would receive information about that match in an email and then in app. And we know this doesn't, like, this isn't the most robust of all methods. We know this is really a starting point for getting you um, to just filter down out of like the 600 schools in CPS, like which ones actually have interest and match what you provide. So we really do hope this just, as Courtney has stated before, like subtracts some of the work that you are doing to find partnerships. And we know that for this to be beneficial, schools also have to be toggling and checking their art look. So we're still socializing this to everyone, to partners, um, to schools, and we'll continue to do that into the fall so that when school starts up in the fall, it's as beneficial and useful as possible for everyone. Yeah. I see a question about who manages the profiles on the school side. Good question. That is what we've been calling arts liaisons. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that term. Essentially a champion of the arts and one person at every school. Essentially the gatekeeper too for the arts. We usually ask for it to be an arts teacher, though at some either smaller schools or some schools where they usually have the principal or administrator also perform as an arts liaison. Where you can find the person that essentially should be updating that information is also on Artlook. So if we are just going here, let's just look at what I have right here. Um, this arts liaison listed is usually the person going to be updating and going into the Artlook profiles, which is why they're also listed as a contact. So when you receive your suggested match, you can click and it'll bring you for, let's say, Elaine Locke Charter Elementary was a suggested match for you. You click the link here, and then the next potential step is contacting the arts liaison here, whether or not that's through email or calling the school. I guess there's no phone provided here, but looking at that information. All right, so then I think we'll let you all out just a little bit earlier. Thank you so much for joining. As always, we know this was actually an hour and 20 minutes, which is quite long. I feel like to sit and listen and engage with us. So thank you so much. This is our contact information. If, again, I think there are a number of questions we saw earlier today um, that we can help try to loop back and ask, I think, like some about the reports and splitting out different reports as well as checking for a charter school, et cetera. If not, like, Please, here's our contact information. Courtney and I are really always willing to help hear what we, how we can best support you all and how we can improve Artlook. We also have that generic Artlook email address at the bottom, which Christine, Ian, and I um, monitor from the data team. Just generally, if you have any questions about being a, unable to log in, need a new account, et cetera, that's the email we go to. And just a reminder, email us with your data requests. If there is something that you're not seeing on the map or that's coming across in the profiles or the back end and you need a specific data point, please reach out and, and we can likely put something together for you. Cool. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Thank you.